Or why would God choose one of the children here to, to change the world? But the fact is that God is willing to choose whoever he wants. There's a story in the Bible where God chooses not the oldest son, but the youngest son to be the one that's glorified. And the Bible says the older will serve the younger. It says Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. So sometimes this is confusing because we don't understand that God can choose whoever he wants to choose. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Educated or uneducated. God can use you to show his glory on the face of the earth. And the Bible says, by no means, or sorry, it says, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion on. So it doesn't... Your willpower does not determine God's future for you. You need to understand you didn't become a teacher. You didn't become an administrator. You didn't become somebody who grew up in this village by accident. Even if you're a parent or grandparent that has not had a chance to get a good education, it doesn't mean that your children and grandchildren cannot get a good education. They can. Because God is not a, a person that, that will just like look over somebody because they're poor or they're uneducated or they don't seem to have something. And again it says, for this very purpose, that I've raised you up so that you might show that I might show my power in you. And I tell you this because you'll you'll celebrate 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Some of these children in the village, some of the children from the surrounding villages, you you'll be able to say, I knew that child when they were this this tall. And because the way it works is they will be successful. And they will bring others in that will be successful. And this area will be be used by God to glorify him. As, as well as raise up the next generation of leaders. So I want you to understand this isn't just a school to get an education. This is a school that will change the whole village. And it will change all of this area. And it will change all of Malawi. I can promise you there will be people who are famous and be known around the world that come from this area. My goal in life is for my children and grandchildren to be more educated, to be smarter than me to have more of a legacy than me and that's how we should all think 
How can we prepare the next generation to be successful? Too many times in certain cultures we curse those that are successful because we're jealous. But you need to understand when you curse somebody, what happens? It actually causes you to get sick. It causes you to be poor. Those kind of witchcraft prayers come back to haunt you. And you'll sit there and go, why are my kids not successful? Why are my grandkids not successful? And then God will tap you on the shoulder and say, do you remember when you cursed that man or that woman? That curse you prayed on somebody else has now landed on you and your children and your grandchildren. Amen? Hallelujah. So it's very important that we bless our children. And if there's a child that does better than your child, bless them too. Do whatever you can for the success to come upon this village because every individual success is success for everyone. It's not a coincidence that, that Gideon's father came to this village. It's not a coincidence that Gideon was very educated. It wasn't a coincidence that we met in Uganda. You need to understand that all the steps of your life are directed by God. That even sometimes God shows up in the whirlwind because God loves signs, wonders, and miracles. So just as that's happening, it's a reminder to stir you up that there are no limitations for those who love Jesus. God believes in you more than you believe in yourself. And so I just want to encourage you going forward. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors about Jesus. But also tell them about this school. Because every successful student in this school means you're successful. Because in the body of Christ, we are one. That there's no separation for those in Christ Jesus. And God made you individually in a specific way, whether you're a boy or you're a girl. Some of these kids will know five languages. Some, some, of these, some of these children will be excellent in math and science. Some of them will be good in reading and writing. Each one is gifted in a very specific way. So I just would ask on behalf of myself and Gideon, that you would not only pray for the protection of this area and this school, but that the, for the protection and the success of every student that goes here. If you find out something is not going right, 
or a student is causing problems, uh, come let us know quickly. Because this is all of our responsibility to make sure these students are safe. Amen. So I would encourage you if you have a Bible to go read the whole of chapter 9 in the book of Romans. Because it's very important that you understand who you are. That you are chosen as a son and daughter of God before the earth was formed. That he has put inside your heart the plans that he has for you. Do you know what I wanted to be when I grew up? I wanted to coach American football. And I wanted to be a secondary school science teacher. But I was not very good at math. And I was okay at science. And God had another plan for my life. And so he led me to become a pastor. None of my friends can believe I am a pastor. Because I was a troublemaker as a child. And I, I don't want to tell stories because they're very, very bad. Lots of fighting. And lots of many other things that we won't, we won't discuss publicly. <laughs> but God chose me, the youngest child in my family, to come to Malawi and to travel the world and tell people about Jesus. I never wanted to leave my, my city. I didn't even really travel until I was a lot older. And I didn't even become a pastor until I was 30 years old. But God had spoken to me when I first got saved. And I didn't tell anybody. But I was sitting in church. And I heard this voice very clearly say, You're going to do the same thing as that man up there. Now, I was very ignorant. I thought when you get sick. I thought when you get saved, your job was to rise up in Christianity and then everybody becomes a pastor. But not everybody becomes a pastor. When, uh, when I first told a, a minister this, he started laughing at me. And he said, no, no, brother, that's, that's the Lord speaking to you. <laughs> and so after that, I didn't, I didn't like, tell anybody about this. But I decided if God wanted me to become a pastor, he'll make it happen. That I was willing to do what he wanted me to do. But that I didn't even understand what it meant to be a pastor. And one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it says, The human mind plans the way. But the Lord directs the steps. And I kept asking people, what is my calling? What am I supposed to be doing? Because I didn't know and they couldn't tell me. And what I found is I just needed to take the next step. 
and the next step. And for those, for me, those steps were going to college. And then going to a Bible college. Serving in a church. And and just work, serving for free. And then many years later of service. That's when I was offered my first paid position. And I tell you, it was 30 years old the first time I was uh, ordained as a pastor. But the first time I got paid was when I was 40 years old. So I just want you to understand it. 20 years old, God told me I was going to be a pastor. So if God's spoken to you about anything, understand that of course you need to pray. Of course you need to obey God. And of course you need to take action. <laughs> but God has already spoken it to you so you know it's going to happen. In the same way I know that inventions will come out of this school. And engineers and scientists. And this may sound funny to you as a preacher. But I'm okay if there's no pastors that come out of this school. Because every one of you that's a man, every one of you that's a man, and if you have children or grandchildren, you're the pastor of your home. And you need to position your family to be as, as successful as they can, more successful than you ever were. And of course you need to challenge them and discipline them. But you also, you also need to celebrate them through every success that they have because it's your success, because it's your child. Or it's your success because it's your grandchild. And if everyone starts to do this, this whole region is going to be changed for the name of Jesus Christ. And then this village will be known in America because of who's come out of here. Amen? So let me pray.